Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. My search for that super light build continues, and this time around I'm checking out this Happy Model Super F405 HD 4-in-1 flight controller with an Express LRS built in. This thing is insanely light. Really not much inside. You have a Express LRS antenna and you've got some motor connectors. I've gotten ahead of myself and I've already installed the board into my quad. And the antenna cable is about 40 millimeters. This will be too short for most builds. You will require a longer antenna. To highlight some of the features of this all-in-one flight controller, it has a F405 microprocessor. Yes, it's an F4, but this is the good F4. The F405 that this has is more powerful than the F411 of the old generation. It does have an ICM 42688 gyro, which really, all of the AIOs at, at this point seem to be using. So not good, not bad. It does of course have a 25 by 25 mounting pattern. Again, no surprise there. What is surprising though, is it has a BMP 280 barometer. So I'm kind of surprised that they managed to squeeze a barometer in this tiny of a package. It unfortunately only has eight megabytes of black box flash storage. If you're super fast, super efficient, that should be enough space. But at this point, eight megabytes is, is kind of pushing it. We, we wanna have more. It does have a full on Express LRS 3.0 receiver using UART. This is not an SPI Express LRS. It's a full on full size Express LRS. On the ESC side, it does have BlueJay, which is great. It supports 20 amps per ESC. So that means 80 amps in total. It can burst up to 25 amps per ESC or 100 amps total. That is plenty for most builds. And unfortunately, it only supports two to four S LiPo. So a couple of compromises, but really not bad for this weight. I've got the new flight controller board installed in my daily flyer. You're looking at the Quadmilla Siren F3 split sub 250 gram quad. This is what I fly every single week. And this has my T motor 1604 motors. So only thing I've changed here really is the flight controller board to give me a really good feel of how this performs. You can see how I've got this board installed and orientated. And you can see the best way I came up with was to have the USB port this way and the power leads coming up over here. Other than that, um, I've got my DJI quick connector installed. It is very, very clean and easy to install. Only thing to bear in mind is that the Express LRS antenna that this board comes with is too short for this frame. So I am using the long antenna that came with my Happy Model Express LRS receiver. Those receivers come with a long antenna and a short antenna. And as you can see, the long antenna is the perfect length. So if you wanna use this board on this frame, do bear in mind, you'll have to figure out how to uh, source one of those antenna. And of course, in order to get this installed, I had to 3D print an adapter plate, which adapts the 20 by 20 mounting of this frame over to the 25 by 25 bolt pattern of this particular all-in-one flight controller. That is something that you can 3D print very, very quickly. And you can kind of see it peeking through down there. I'll give you links to all these things in the video description so you can find them easily. And the final thought here is, Although these motor pads look very large in the photos, they're, they're actually not. You can see how close these are. And really these motors don't use very thick wires. These motors use 24 gauge cables. And I'd probably say this is the largest motor that you can run given that wire. If you're very, very good at soldering, you've got some um, really steady hands of, of, of a neurosurgeon, then perhaps you can go a little bit larger, but just look at how close those are. Let's go ahead and do a final weight check because the goal here is to make this as light as possible. This used to weigh 166 grams, now it weighs 154 grams. We have saved a whopping 12 grams here. You're either looking at the flight footage directly from my goggles three or from the O3 air unit itself. These are all un stabilized flight footage. I don't add any stabilization to my flight video because I do believe that you need to see what the quad is doing. And by having unstabilized footage, you can actually see any kind of jitters, any kind of shakes, any kind of prop watch, all of those will come through in the video you're looking at. So unfortunately today is, is not the greatest weather. Dare I say it's quite uh, poopy, more poopy than, than normal. 
but we are about minus five degrees Celsius and white stuff on, on the ground and definitely a little bit of wind, but I, I need to fly. I need to get out there and keep the fingers as nimble as the cold weather will allow. So I'm back at my usual flying area here and I do like this area because of all the obstacles that allows us to really enjoy freestyle flight. And flying this new flight controller, everything performed kind of as expected, which, which that's, that's the goal. We want this to perform as good as a flight controller that weighs three times as much. And I'd say really it performed maybe 95% the same. That final 5% I'll chuck up to maybe the cold weather being hard on the electronics, on the motors and, and the battery. I did see a couple of shakes that I, I wasn't expecting, but definitely as you're watching the fly footage, you, you be the judge of how you think this is performing. I did do many, many full throttle punch outs and I sustained those full throttle punch outs as long as my, my heart and my mind would kind of let me do, but no issues, everything performed as expected, nothing exploded, nothing desynchronized. So definitely to me, it, it's proving the point that those SkyStar motors I reviewed a couple of videos ago, those were the culprit around the desync I had. On this particular flight controller and these T motors that I'm using in this video, everything is performing as expected. I did also go a little bit further. I went behind the school just to test the Express LRS component of this all-in-one flight controller and the Express LRS performed as expected. You can see the transmitter module ramps up in milliwatts as, as expected and then it ramps down. It's all very seamless, which again, that's what we expect. Nothing really performed out of the ordinary. And I did fly multiple packs. So I know a lot of folks will question the longevity of a device like this. And when I say device, I'm talking about the all-in-one flight controller, but I've now flown many, many packs on this and I haven't experienced any kind of issues yet. So as you can see, this thing looks like it is actually a very good contender for those looking for the ultimate lightweight build. I am going to make this my go-to for subsequent builds. So hopefully you like this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.